So, we almost did an uh, emergency broadcast last week. I just I was doing crazy hours at uh, at Moomba and I just couldn't get away. Uh, but but when this toilet paper insanity broke, I just went, "What are people thinking?" And I thought, "Ah, oh, look, you know, surely people will come to their senses and you know realize that there's absolutely no point." stockpiling toilet paper uh yes things are going down but i mean we've been telling people that things are going down for you know years and we've especially been pointing to it over the last six months surely people have understood the you know read between the lines and have been you know starting to stock up on canned goods and long life stuff here and there over the past you know six months and there should be no need for you know panic buying but i thought well okay but you know, maybe some people have left it to the last moment. They didn't get the message. So, you know, they, they should be out there getting rice and pasta and tin soups. But no, they're getting toilet paper. So anyway, I had a few conversations with a few people. And I said, oh, look, you know, surely people are going to get it eventually. And yes, lo and behold, about a week later, uh, people finally got the message that no, they can't actually eat toilet paper and they'd better damn well get rice and canned food and pasta. And so that's, of course, now the, the, you know, the thing that they're hoarding. And uh, I mean, th- this is, I guess, the, the, the first point that I want to make uh, about this, that uh, it, it is time to prepare or it has been time to prepare for a little while now. Not panic. Uh, Panicking is not going to fix anything. If you haven't prepared and you haven't got yourself ready, well, panicking is still not going to help you. Um, It's it's not a time for panic, and it's certainly not a time to sit there and, oh, she'll be right, and it's all going to blow over in a couple of weeks, uh, because that's not the case either, and uh, I think everybody's seen that, um, because most people said, oh, surely this toilet paper thing is not going to, you know, last forever and there's plenty of stockpiles in Australia and you know there's no issue with toilet paper and it'll all be blowing over in a couple of weeks and you'll be able to buy toilet paper again well again everybody uh, that I know of has seen that that is well and truly not the case uh, not only can you not buy toilet paper but you now can't buy rice you can't buy pasta you can't buy canned goods uh, most of the supermarket shelves now are uh, close to bare uh, certainly any of the major uh, meat sections, you know, butchers are closed. I've heard reports from people on Facebook that entire like Coles and um, Safeway supermarkets are closed, shutters down with security standing out the front of them. Uh, there was a report uh, today that uh, city folk were uh, going up to regional supermarkets in buses and clearing out regional supermarkets. And uh, I, I want to make it clear to everybody this is just the beginning okay you think things are crazy now it is just the beginning hopefully hopefully everyone who's tuned into this show has been able to read between the lines and is not panicking and and they have prepared themselves Uh, you you know the the example I've been giving to most of the people I'm speaking to is treat this like your fire plan you know we've all you know many people have experienced just you know in recent months the you know the crazy bushfires you know and and hopefully people in those uh, affected areas had a plan they knew what the trigger was for them when to get out you know they had their you know their bag of 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 clothes and photos and, and and you know all their essentials by the door ready to go you know whenever the trigger was whatever that was they grab their bag they jump in the car and they left Uh, and this needs to be the same thing for you now Uh, you you need to have your plan you know are you going to stay or are you going to go a lot of people are choosing to go away they're choosing to go out to the country they're choosing to go down to holiday houses uh, you know away from the madness of the city and if you're fortunate enough to be in the position to be able to do that I certainly recommend it Um, my prediction is that things are going to get a lot worse in the city Uh, again if I told you a month ago that people were going to be rioting over toilet paper, that people were going to be having brawls in supermarkets over toilet paper, that people were going to hold knives to each other over toilet paper, you would have thought that I'd just fallen off the moon. Yet that is exactly what we've just seen happen in the last few weeks. Uh, if I told you on, on an emergency broadcast a week ago that the shelves would be almost bare in a week, again, most of you would have gone, oh, there goes Mike and his conspiracy theories again. But again, you've seen it. 
So uh, hopefully we've uh, generated more than a little bit of credibility that we know what we're talking about. Uh, we've known this has been coming for a long time and uh, we've certainly been prepared. We've been telling everybody to get prepared and, and hopefully they've done uh, the same thing. But rest assured, it is going to get a lot worse before it gets better. Uh, and, and again, I'll explain it to you like this. Uh, look at how crazy people have gone over toilet paper. So how do you think that people are going to react, people who just woken up and just realized, oh, wow, this shit's real. Um, you know, I don't actually have food to feed my family. There's nothing on the shelves in the supermarkets. How do you think people are going to you know, react to that? Now, I'm not saying this is good. I'm not saying this is how Australians should have reacted. I'm not saying this is how people should have dealt with this. I'm not condoning what's happened in any way, shape or form. People should have done what I've been doing, which is just stocking you know, a couple of extra things every week for the last six months so that they don't need to panic and they just go, okay, it's all happening now, so we're going to buy a few extra things. Some of the fresh food that doesn't keep, we'll you know, stock up on a bit of that and that's it. But that's obviously not what's happened. And it's absolute madness out there and it's going to get worse. It's going to get crazy. Um, yeah, Some people just panicking and just stockpiling and, and going nuts, which of course is not fair to others. I mean, we've all heard about the issues with the elderly and the disabled. They're not able to, to get things that they need. Uh, and other people are still sitting there going, oh no, it, it's fine. It'll all just blow over in a couple of weeks and, and, and we'll be right. And they're now finding out that they can't just go to the supermarket and get food like they're used to doing every second day because it's just not there. So... That's the reality of it, and and there's no there's no escaping that. I mean, some I've spoken to people from right around the country. There's you know there's some places that have still got food on the shelves. There's some places you can still go in and buy toilet paper. Um, there's some regional um, areas that aren't being affected, but as we heard today, you know that people are now learning about those and and going into those as well. So that's that's what's happened. We can't do anything about what's happened, uh, but what we can do uh, something about is what it what's about to happen and we can prepare ourselves um, for that. So obviously the stock market has had an almighty shake up. It has had a huge crash. Uh, now this is you know the crash and correction and whatever you wanna call it that it needed to have. And again, I reiterate, this is just the beginning. Now I'm not a financial advisor, I'm not licensed to give any sort of financial advice, but I do have a brain and I can think for myself. Now. What we've seen is the panic selling. Everybody going, oh my God, we don't know what's going on here, so we're just gonna sell, because that's what people do. Now, the media, of course, are saying, oh, well, this is a buying opportunity, and, and this, is, you know, this is a great opportunity to buy shares at discounted prices, and the government's you know, doing stimulus packages and, and all the rest of it, so buy these shares and, and, and make some money you know, in the long term. Now, I, I don't know who out there is buying any shares, because I don't know anyone. I know some people who are quite cashed up, who have lots of money, and even they are not buying shares. Why would they? It's completely uncertain what's going to go on. Why would they put their money in that when they could be putting it in, you know, to stockpiling food right now? No one's buying shares. Now, what's happening? Again, what's happening right now? People are having their shifts cut hospitality industry and, and many, many others. They're having shifts cut. There are businesses that are saying, all right, we're only going to work three days this week. Okay, uh, people, this is only going to go for a couple of weeks and then those businesses are going to start closing down. They're going to shut their doors. People are going to lose their jobs. Qantas just said today they're going to cut 90% of international flights, 90% and 60% of domestic flights. Virgin's doing something similar. I mean, that's just one industry. Think about how many people are going to be out of work. Now, as we know, most Australians live paycheck to paycheck maybe two weeks ahead if they're lucky. So what is going to happen when people are out of work for just a couple of weeks? They're gonna have no money coming in, so whatever investments or assets they have, they are going to dump. So whether they like it or not, if they've got shares that have just lost 20 or 30%, well, bad luck, they've got to eat. So they're gonna dump those shares. So the share market is going to crash again, monumentally even bigger than it already has. It can't be any other way. So if you are, Lord forbid, still in the share market, get the hell out now. Yes, I know it's painful. Yes, I know it hurts to lose 25, 30%. I get that, but you are gonna lose a hell of a lot more if you don't get out, if you just go, nah, she'll be right, it'll bump back up and we'll all be fine. 
okay so again take my warning heed my warning ignore it if you like but uh, that, that to me just seems so crystal clear and obvious the other thing that seems crystal clear and obvious and we have been telling people on every show this year and most of our shows last year is get your money out of the banks okay people are going to be scrambling to get cash out right now I don't care where you are in Australia, when the supermarkets open, there are queues to get into the supermarket. That is happening around the entire country. What do you think is about to happen at ATMs? People are about to do a run on the banks. They're gonna wanna get their cash out because they know that these bail-in laws were just brought in at the end of last year and that when the you know banks fail, which is inevitable, and I'll explain why in a moment, there's not going to be any money. So they are going to start the run on the banks. I'm surprised, honestly, that it hasn't happened already. I give it a couple of days. You, While you see queues at supermarket entrances now, you're going to start to see queues at ATMs because what's going to happen, there's going to be 20 people in the queue. There's only so much money they can stock into an ATM. Can't put a million dollars in there. And people are going to go in. They're going to take the cash out. And these ATMs are going to run dry. And there's going to be queues waiting for the armor guard bloke to turn up the next morning. Okay, it's, it's gonna be very, very difficult for you to get your cash out if you haven't already done so. Now, why am I so certain that the banks are gonna go under? Because we all only need to look at what's already going on in other places in the world. Okay, we are about to do what Italy has done. We're about two weeks behind. They're already a week into their lockdown. We're about a week away from lockdown. Okay, now what did they do? They put a moratorium on all mortgage payments. They also put a moratorium on small business loans. So what they've done is they've just stopped. So you don't have to make your mortgage payment for the next two or three weeks while we're in lockdown. You don't have to make your small business loan um, payments while you're while we all in lockdown. Now, what do you think that's gonna do to the bank's cash flow when they've got no payments coming in? Okay, but everyone's running for their cash. It is gonna stretch them to the limit. Okay, and they are going to go under. That remember, you know, we only just got through the GFC, the banks that were too big to fail. Okay, that, that, you know, Scomo, Scummo has already said that we are way beyond, way beyond what happened in the GFC. He's already admitted that. Yet people forget it was only, you know, not that long ago. So you know, only a few years ago. Please look at what happened. It's going to be worse. Get your money out while you still can. All right. Uh, there was uh, an article came through from I think it was from WA this morning. Uh, the government there has put a moratorium on uh, electricity and water uh, and vehicle registration, so you don't have to pay your electricity and uh, and water rates at the at the moment, um, uh, water bills and your uh, your vehicle registration. So, you know, to try and free up some, you know, some cash flow for people. So these things are already happening. So my predictions, okay, now these are just my thoughts. They're just my predictions. I don't have a crystal ball, uh, but this is based on research that we've done. This is based on intel that we've received from other sources. Uh, this is based on what else has happened around the world already. Um, San Francisco has just gone into lockdown as of midnight tonight uh, for three weeks. Uh, it's happening in a number of cities around uh, around the US. We will go into lockdown, okay? It is all but inevitable. Uh, they're gonna close the schools first. Uh, it's my belief that they're gonna leave that until as close to the school holidays as possible. There's already been a lot of talk in the media about what would happen if they closed the schools today. One of the biggest issues is that mostly women would have to take time off work to be there for their kids. Uh, most of the healthcare workers happen to be women. I'm, again, I'm just using you know, generalizations here. Uh, and obviously they don't want to put any further strain on the healthcare system, so they don't want to do that. So they're going to leave it as close to the school holidays as they can because people are already re aware of and ready to be there for their kids you know, during the school holidays. So they will um, they'll close the schools as close to the school holidays as possible. It may happen this week. Um, but otherwise, they'll try and leave it till uh, next week if they can. It's you know, it's all happening very, very quickly on a day-by-day -day basis. Uh, the courts will shut down. Uh, all of the, uh, the, you know, the public services, your, you know, your RTAs and all that sort of stuff. Uh, because, you know, the magistrates, the judges, they're humans too. They, they don't want to, you know, 
sit there and the risk of getting bloody coronavirus from your filthy grotty paperwork that you know people are handing up to them on a daily basis that kind of thing so you know they want to protect their asses too so that'll be the next thing that happens uh, and then the next step beyond that will be the uh, will be the lockdown uh, as has happened in Italy as has happened in Spain as has happened in France uh, so again there's no need to panic about that you should have been aware that this is happening all along and just prepare for it so work out where do you want to be who do you want to be surrounded with do you want to be on your own do you want to be with family do you want to be with a group of friends uh, you know do you want to be in the city do you want to be out in the country do you want to be at your holiday house do you want to be out in your boat uh, whatever it is for you, you know, you've got to figure out what's right for you. But obviously, make sure that you've got your, you know, your supplies of food, you've got supplies of water, and uh, just make sure that you're ready for that. As I said, we're going to take our uh, portable studio with us. We're obviously not going to be staying uh, here. We're going to be away from the city because I think things are going to get quite bad here. Uh, we've uh, Aussies have already shown their true colours, fighting over bloody toilet paper for crying out loud. Um, so I think when the reality hits, uh, it's it's going to freak out a lot of people, and uh, we're going to see an even worse side of people, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, it is uh, it is what it is. So be prepared for these things, be aware of these things, and you know just start thinking about you know this is not going to go away, this is not just going to blow over in two weeks, and nobody, even those of us who are prepared, nobody really understands the full ramifications. This is unprecedented in history. We've never seen anything like this before. You know, 50 to 60% of companies are not going to survive this. Okay, they are going to go out of business. You know, hundreds of thousands of people are going to lose their jobs. The ramifications of this are going to be massive. Now, whether or not this coronavirus is real and whether it should or shouldn't have happened and, and all the rest of it, you know, we can talk about after the, uh, the upcoming break. But for right now, I just want people, um, you know, we're not going to talk about the, you know, whether it's right or wrong or good or bad or whatever else. Let's, let's deal with the reality of the situation. The reality of the situation is that there's very little food left on the shelves. They can't restock things quickly enough. Um, and as people start to go into true panic mode, that's going to get a lot worse. Uh, the stock market is going to continue to fall. Uh, the, uh, the banks are going to start to close. There's going to be restrictions on money. There's already restrictions on cash. Uh, there was an article that came through that one supermarket said that they're not accepting cash. This, of course, is all under the completely false and misleading guise that uh, cash will spread the coronavirus, which, of course, is complete crap. Um, lawfully, they're not allowed to refuse cash. Uh, we've heard that there's a chicken uh, shop chain that's refusing to accept cash. And you know, this is, again, one of the things that they're going to push for. They want everyone to do everything online and you know, credit cards and plastic and watches and, and all the rest of it. So, again, just be on the lookout for this. Don't buy into it. Grab your cash out and use cash uh, wherever you possibly can. So we are going to go to another break. Let all that sink in. Uh, it's not all bad. There is uh, some very good stuff that's uh, going to come out of all this. And uh, that's what I want to address after this uh, short break. So uh, please don't go anywhere.